With hair reminiscent of a young Tana Umanga and after having spent a few years playing in New Zealand when he was a teen, some people think Josh Navidi's roots lie on the South Island, but his dad's actually from Iran. And these days, the cult favorite at Cardiff, uh, the Welsh flanker, spends a lot of his spare time in an airline hangar here on the outskirts of Barry, fixing cars to soothe his soul. Thank you for joining us. Uh, well, actually, thank you for welcoming us to Where Are We and What Is This? Um, so, well, we call this the, the playground. It's a little cool place. We come here to play toys, basically, more than anything. But we're in St. Athens in uh, sunny South Wales. And uh, yeah, it's a nice place and I can potter with my cars. Um, when I said to someone that I was coming to chat to you, uh, what, what do they want to know? They said, ask him about the hair. <laughs> you've, uh, <laughs> you've always had it this long, have you? When, uh, when did you start growing it? Yeah, I've had them since I was 15, so I'm 31 now. So they've been a bit probably part of me. Um, my fiance doesn't want me to cut them, but <laughs> they'll have to come off at some point. Um, hopefully, I, I, I want to uh, shave them off as charity at some point. So hopefully raise a bit of money there. But, it's a part of me and a uh, bit of my image, I think, more than anything. So did you grow up watching anyone? Was there a, like an icon that you were emulating? Were yeah. you inspired by someone? No, I'd, like, I used to enjoy like watching uh, Tana play. Um, but I don't think it's come from that. It's always something I wanted. But yeah, I used to watch him a lot, um, like John Lomu. Um, There's yeah. a photo of you and Ma Nonu on your Instagram, oh, yeah. where your hair is almost identical as well. <laughs> yeah, so I, I played out in um, New Zealand for two years uh, in St. Bede's uh, College Rugby. Um, really enjoyed it, it was such a great experience. And I, I, I always say, when people ask about it, I say, just go do it, go explore somewhere different. You chose to come play your rugby professionally in Wales when you could have probably stayed in New Zealand, like yeah. if you wanted to. You had an opportunity to stay there. Yeah. Um, and you now are about as Welsh as anyone like can probably identify with. Um, but there's this whole other kind of part of your identity that a lot of people don't even know. Like someone said to me, oh, where is his surname from? Because most, even, most yeah. people don't even think. Yeah, I, I get like mistaken all the time. Like people think I'm Kiwi or I'm Polynesian or something like that. And now I'm Iranian, <laughs> half Iranian, so. Um, What's the response you usually get from people when you say that? Um, I don't know, it's just a bit of shock really, because like, when you play, like sometimes you play against someone and you think, oh yeah, because I went out to New Zealand and the hair, um, maybe sometimes like some of the lingo I use um, has come from there, but um, yeah, it's like someone's like quite taken back. Um, have you been back to Iran yourself? So I was going to go before COVID, um, hit. Um, I was looking to go. Um, I was trying to so I, so I could go see like how like the rugby out there because they slowly like start start building up. So they do a lot of sevens. Um, it'd just be nice to see where my dad's from, um, where he grew up, um, where my family's from, um, and yeah, and just get that experience because my dad always talks about it. And you have the imagine you can imagine it, but it'd be nice to see where the family home was. We like grew up playing football there, and we used to go wrestle and stuff like that. And so normally, in, when you go in Iran, you do national service. But if you're on, um, if you're studying, etc., you can you, you don't do it. Because if I went to Iran now, I probably have to do national service because my surname. Um, but he came over, um, studied in Bangor and then ended up down in uh, pont de um, in the uni there doing civil engineering. But while he was up in Bangor, he met my mum. They moved down when I think they were 20, I think 22-ish. And then set up a salon and then my dad's done all sorts from bouncing, delivering tiles, um, working in a kebab shop. He's done everything under the sun. You say your dad has done kind of a bit of everything under the sun and you seem to certainly be that kind of person. You've, you, you have such a diverse range of interests. Yeah. You're a rugby player, but there's a lot more to you. Have you always been that adventurous and kind of... I think so. I think it's probably the way, like I've seen my dad and my mum, it's always like we've, like we've always 
I've had loads of interest. I used to BMX when I was younger, like motorsport, extreme sports I'm big into, like surfing I do a lot of. Um, yeah, so a lot, I, 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 I kind of like having that little, something different compared to rugby because everyone thinks, oh, rugby player, you're always um, flat out on air watching games and stuff, but I'm quite outdoorsy and really enjoy different, doing different things, really. You also dabble in a few other things. Is the DJing still a thing? Yeah, so <laughs> on the, the Lions tour, I was a resident DJ for the Lions. <laughs> so we, we, like you knew, we, we were locked in, we couldn't do much. So the boys would say, get on the decks now. So this means, like, luckily, we got a little uh, controller and then I'd be basically playing till, I don't know, late at night. But the boys loved it, which is good, but I haven't done too much because of COVID. Um, and I haven't really had uh, that much opportunity at the minute because rugby's so busy at the minute that I don't want to be working till, I don't know, three, four o'clock in the morning, DJ, and then, then got to go training the next day. So I've kind of pushed it to one side at the minute. But in my time off, or say you got weekends off, I try and fill it in with that. Talk to me about your earliest Rugby World Cup memory. So I remember my dad, um, this is back in Bridgen, my dad sat me down, he goes, just sit, sit here for five now and watch this game. And I remember it was um, All Blacks v England when um, John Lamu ran over three guys and scores that amazing, <laughs> amazing try in the corner. Wide to Lamu, he's got the bounce, he's handed off his opposite. Lamu, oh, 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 muscle and pump, he's over for the early try. I, that set me off, that, like, the passion started from there, and I, I, I remember that day, like, very vividly. John Lamu was huge, like, how many people he got into rugby, and I was lucky enough to meet him um, at a dinner in Bridgend. Um, and my dad, my, my dad basically, basically cornered him, <laughs> so after everything's finished, and Fair play to him that he actually took his time to sit down with us and um, he, he, I'm sure he spent it's about an hour, hour and a half with my dad just talking about the year, about New Zealand, about um, like all the rugby and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's it special to me, I was just sat there staring at him. I'm lucky I, I got a, a signed jersey by Jonah and uh, Christian Cullen in my, in, my, in my house, which is pretty special. You've said your dream was always to win a World Cup with Wales. 2019, you came very close to a final. Yeah. I mean, excruciatingly. Close. Yeah. Um, so I played in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, I got injured. I tore my hamstring early on, and then well, the boys saw out the game, beat France, um, and then we had South Africa. Um, and that was probably one of the hardest games to watch because it was so close and. To miss out on that opportunity is, I don't know, it'll stay with me forever and hopefully I get a chance again. But I think, uh, yeah, we've we done well that World Cup. But it's a shame that we, we couldn't see it out. Is there a future in which Wales wins a World Cup? Yeah, I, I think so. And hopefully I'm there. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's time, like a lot, of, a lot of stuff's changed in Wales now. We've got a good. Um, academy systems, we've got a lot of great youngsters coming through, which is good to see. Um, I'm, I'm getting old, but it's nice to see 21, 22, 23 year olds coming through and even the academy system, some great players coming. And fingers crossed, um, we get a chance to, to lift that, that gold trophy and uh, we get, get a little World Cup thing on our jersey. <laughs>